Defence Vehicle Dynamics 2018 and I'm joined by Rob O'Connor, Director of Hardus Defence and Security. Hardus are here unveiling the Hippo ATSV. So Rob, can you tell me some of the technical characteristics of the Hippo? Yes, it's got three main characteristics. The first one is its payload. Uh, we've designed it to, uh, to support a dismounted infantry platoon. So that involves carrying about 750 kilos of cargo to support the platoon. However, it can also be used to clear a parachute drop zone. So we can put a 1,000 kilo pallet on the back of it as well. The second characteristic is, it, is its mobility. So it can support um, the, that dismounted soldier wherever the soldier goes. So it can be inserted into theatre by parachute or by internally in a CH-47. It can be towed over operational distances by another vehicle or it can travel on its own power uh, over extremely demanding terrain, including its ability to float. So it's also amphibious. The third characteristic is its exportable power. Um, and it's got a five kilowatt generator, which allows it to provide all the battery charging, the power for ECM, the power for radios, even a boiling vessel on the vehicle. Uh, but it can also export hydraulic power for engineering tools as well. And are there any autonomous characteristics with the vehicle? We've, we've used, um, earlier in the year, we uh, were part of the um, DSDL Autonomous Last Mile Resupply um, competition. And we had a, an autonomy kit um, applied to the vehicle which allowed it to follow um, GPS waypoints or to be driven by remote control over tele operation. So it's very easy to put a or to retrofit a, an autonomy package onto the vehicle. And are you going to be taking part in the Autonomous Warrior exercise in uh, December? Yes, we are. We've, uh, we've teamed up with Digital Concepts Engineering here in the UK and they're providing a teleoperation uh, PK kit for the vehicle. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to have a second vehicle which is going to act as a, a mothership for other uh, robotic platforms, whether they're uh, UAS systems or smaller robots that we can deploy from the vehicle either to carry those um, robots close to where they're needed or to recharge batteries using the 5 kilowatt generator. And could you tell me about some of the tests that will be carried out? The, well, we've done a lot of very internal testing ahead of, uh, of being involved in Autonomous Warrior. So we've had the, the vehicles conducting a series of, of representative battlefield missions out in America in both hot, dry and hot, wet conditions so that we, we understand the, the technical rigours uh, required of the vehicle. In terms of the testing of the vehicle here in the UK, uh, we're really just reacting to what the, uh, the Army wants us to do with it on, the, on Autonomous Warrior. So whether it is to provide last mile resupply, whether it's to recharge other robotic equipment, or whether it's to um, conduct other missions uh, where, where a robotic vehicle is required, we're, we're standing by to support as and what the Army requires. And I guess that's an advantage to have an optionally manned vehicle. It is, because for, for a variety of reasons. One, if there is a failure of the autonomy kit, it means that a driver can take over. It also means that you can uh, have a much simpler robotic capability and that you're just using the robotics for those areas where you don't want to uh, expose a human operator to, uh, to risk. A variety of different ways that we can look at it, but essentially we are there to react to what the Army wants us to do with it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to us and good luck for phase two. Thank you very much. Thank you.